Afternoon. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said Thursday the U.S. hit the $31.4 trillion borrowing cap set by Congress. And while the Treasury Department will take measures to keep payments going on America's debt until June 5th, it steps up the pressure on Congress to come to an agreement or risk an unprecedented default. This is about economic stability versus economic chaos. With the potential for U.S. economic catastrophe, raising the debt ceiling has historically been a routine and bipartisan act. Congress most recently did it just over one year ago. But the dynamics of the new House Republican majority could prompt a drawn-out battle this round, after Kevin McCarthy made concessions during his contentious speaker's election to hardline members of his party who want to use the debt ceiling as a bargaining chip in a debate over cutting future government spending. Let's start paying this debt off. Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell said he expects the White House will have to get involved in the discussions. We'll end up in some kind of negotiation with the administration over what the circumstances or conditions under which the debt ceiling be raised. Potential consequences of a long debt ceiling standoff range from market turmoil, crashing Americans' retirement accounts to the government being forced to prioritize federal payments, deciding which will come first among Social Security, federal salaries, and other payments. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. And for more clarity, taking an in-depth look at exactly uh, what exactly the debt limit is and how it would impact Americans if it's not increased. According to the Treasury Department, the debt limit is the total amount of money the U.S. government's authorized to borrow to meet its existing legal obligations, including Social Security and Medicare benefits, military salaries, interest on the national debt, tax refunds, and other payments. The debt limit does not authorize new spending commitments. It just simply allows the government to finance existing legal obligations that Congress and presidents of both parties have made in the past. Failing to increase the debt limit would cause the government to default on its legal obligations. Now, keeping that in mind, Congress has always acted when called upon to raise the debt limit. Since 1960, Congress has acted 78 separate times to permanently raise, temporarily extend, or revise the definition of the debt limit. It has happened 49 times under Republican presidents and 29 times under Democratic presidents.